Welcome back and we are into thick of festivities right now and this is the time when gold is bought and we have with us an amazing panel from the jewellery sector. But there is one thing that I also want to discuss and this one is to you Ashraf first. Lab grown diamonds is yet another new kid on the block. It has been around for some time but it really has started to make some noise uh, within this season. How do you look at that industry? Well, uh, you know, uh, India, India being a very conscious of investment and asset class uh, kind of uh, situation. I'm four generations on this line and I've seen how gold and diamonds has appreciated and has come to great use at times of, you know, COVID lockdowns and all. I don't see lab-grown diamonds making that dent. I see the Indian consumer, at least the well-versed, the well person who understands that this is an asset class. I don't see them welging much into it. I would say lab-grown diamonds are more for the fashion jewelry uh, segment as of now. And uh, with the prices depreciating week on week and day on day, uh, it's uh, needless to say showing that it's not a great investment, but great for fashion if, if you're up for it. It's a parallel market, I would say. Very nascent right now. Mm. Abhay, what is your sense? Because, and do consumers ask for lab-grown diamonds? Well, uh, you know, lab-grown diamonds have certainly uh, disrupted the market to some sense. But let me give you some facts here. Uh, synthetic diamonds are are here to stay. They look exactly like natural diamonds, but they do not carry any value at all. But there are two questions here that a consumer would want to kind of understand and have addressed. One, uh, should they be investing in synthetic diamonds? And two, are they eco-friendly? So let me put this across to you, uh, Manisha, and let, let's imagine that you are blessed with a grandchild today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would you want to give your grandchild a one gram gold coin, a natural diamond, or would you want to give him a synthetic, uh, a synthetic diamond as a gift? You know, synthetic diamonds will not carry any emotional value. It is only the naturals that will continue to carry value. I don't look at it purely from an emotional point of view. Take history, for example, in the recent past, we've had cryptos coming in and they almost, you know, kind of unsettled uh, our traditional currencies and uh, various other forms of hedging. But what happened eventually? Cryptos have really kind of gone down. So what would you do eventually? That's a question you have to ask when you have to do it for your own child, for your own family. Would you go in for a synthetic or would you go in for a natural? And to answer the second one on uh, eco-friendly, uh, you know, it is falsely imagined that uh, lab-grown diamonds are eco-friendly. Natural diamonds are created under pressures of about a thousand degree temperature and pressures that are almost amounting to 500,000 times of what the Earth's atmospheric pressure is. Can you believe that this kind of uh, condition is created in a laboratory in an eco-friendly manner? No. Hmm. There is a ton of equipment that goes into it from metal to power to everything involved even the rubber that you use is not necessarily eco-friendly mm. so how can you even uh, you know talk about lab grown diamonds as eco-friendly so these are points that the consumer must consider before investing like uh, mm. sure rightly said you know, this will stay on and I think that they do stay on in the business as fashion jewelry. Okay. I wish them all the best. All right. I had a problem concentrating after you told me to imagine a grandchild. I mean, that's clearly very, very far away. <laughs> but sort of this one is to you. How would you look at the trends? I mean, there is this, as I said, there is a consumer is spoiled for choice, let's say. I mean, there is fashion jewelry. There are all kinds of diamonds and colored diamonds and sapphires and rubies and etc. What are the trends that you see right now? And if I had to ask you, you know, give me a tip on what I should be buying this festive season, how would you advise? Uh, Manisha, this season is really going to be a season of abundance uh, in variety and in choice. Um, I think like Ashraf mentioned, diamonds are back with a bang and uh, diamonds of, a, uh, of higher quality than bigger sizes is what consumers are looking at. Uh, we can see across the uh, across all stores, it's, it's heavy necklaces, bangles, bracelets, solitaire finger rings, earring is what consumer looking at. And it is the value which they feel a natural diamond will have over a period of time, uh, which is what is attracting them. Um, like Abhay mentioned, you know, lab-grown diamonds uh, are on the side of fashion. And I think uh, we, we have done a trial with silver jewelry and lab-grown diamonds on the fashion side, which is uh, you know targeting towards fashion conscious people, influencers, millennials. But it is not uh, asset class. It doesn't hold value. 
But yes, definitely the market for that, and we'll see it growing. India is a young country. We're seeing a lot of uh, young population here looking at jewelry for everyday use, something which they want to show off, and you know that can uh, be a market which is lab grown and you know uh, silver jewelry or other synthetic stones can take over. Mm. But coming back, you know what you should buy uh, for Diwali. Mm. I think gold is what is eternal. Mm. Uh, Indians love gold. We are the largest consuming country in the world. And I think anything in gold, right from a gold coin to a beautiful necklace to something for like a beautiful bangle, earring, uh, Manisha, I think any, everything will look good on you. But <laughs> if uh, given a choice, I would say go for gold. All right. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. And I'm definitely going for gold this time around. Asher, what's your sense? What would you advise? And what are the trends you're looking at? Of course, the diamond uh, jewelry have uh, gained... Uh, like it is increasing the customers in India have a lot of aspirations and uh, even the middle class also. They want to have a small diamond jewelry uh, according to their budgets. So uh, the demand for diamond jewelry is increasing and because of uh, the manufacturers and uh, uh, the retailers coming out with uh, various design options mm. which can fit you know, to the budgets of the consumers. So that is helping the consumers to buy a uh, diamond jewelry, which they were dreaming of, and some uh, promotions or some collections, which can be, which is affordable to those kind of customers. Okay. So that trend is increasing. Studded jewelry trend is increasing. Mm. Uh, so even uh, a mix of uh, color stones or other precious stones, uh, along with the diamonds, also is trending. So it is all design based and the confidence in diamond is not reducing okay. because that aspiration and the, you know, the position diamond have been in all these years that is still there. Absolutely. Of course, lab grown um, and diamonds, when it comes to the market, it will have its own customers. Even the same customer also may buy some of the lab grown diamond jewelry also. It's not that they will buy only this or that. Mm. Even if you see any women's wardrobe, you can see a designer uh, dress and also uh, some a casual, casual wear. Um, yes. of everything. Yeah. So this that, this will also will have a mix of that. Depends on the design and uh, you know the liking of those customers they will buy. So the lab grown is not never going to uh, be a threat for the real natural diamond jewelry that mm. will remain there all these years. Many stones have come, many metals have come. True that. But the shine of gold or the sparkle of diamond have never gone. That'll, That'll always stay, yes. Very well put that. Uh, uh, Mr. Varghese, this question is to you. So what would you advise uh, on uh, what should be a good buying tip? And also, uh, uh, what is the your sense on what what is the percentage increase that we could be looking at for overall jewellery sector as compared to last year? Uh, compared to last year, uh, the first uh, half which we have finished, we see a 15 to 20 percent growth in the sales overall so this is a good growth uh, compared to last year and as i mentioned by everyone this diamond jewelry sales have been picking up mm. all over and there is a big transparency in the jewelry industry than earlier yeah. so things have been all organized by most of the organized jewelers and the government also has been supporting with this huid awareness to the customers mm. so it is a confidence to customers to buy the 22 carat jewelry which it is mentioned by and certified by the government mm. so there is more confidence and there is more transparency whether you are selling gold or even diamond jewelry certifications and all that so it is very uh, transparent and uh, customers can uh, trust the jewelers and there is uh, more uh, uh, customers preferring to buy uh, jewelry during the season of uh the early season or even the wedding season which is coming up so all are uh, bullish on uh, upcoming days and the gold prices are also mm. going up well absolutely it's a wealth that you can wear and what's better than that so designs and certifications record uh, buying is what the street is expecting here and of course gold and diamond is something that does not go out of fashion gentlemen thank you so much we wish you happy festivities and we wish you a very great quarter as well in sense of sales there but with that it's time for this edition of commodity champions thank you for watching